are back on this Tuesday morning. 60 degrees. First of all, look who got a haircut. 60 degrees out there. Frank and I was just we were just talking. Colder weather, getting used to it out there. A lot of you enjoy this weather. 60 degrees. He says he absolutely loves it. I'll wait for summer again. JC? <laughs> A little bit chilly running around naked around the house, Frank. Yeah. But Phil, doggone good. Good morning. I'm Jamie Cooper. Thank y'all for getting up with us on this Tuesday morning edition of Cooper and Company Live. This is Athens in the AM. Joining me today, I can't get over Tony Grigsby's line to me and you, Tom. If we were riding in the convertible, he pulls up and says, Hey, Chico's. Where y'all going? Chick fil A? Yeah. <laughs> Tony Grigsby. Uh, how are you, Tom? I'm good this morning. How are I you? you? I see you brought your little kindergartner in here this morning. I did. Yeah, he, Mac. School started back, and so he's getting up a little earlier. Yeah, school. First day of school yesterday. Mac in here this morning. Going to talk all about football if we have time for that. we got a lot of stuff to talk about. It. Some of it ain't good. We'll share that news with you in just a moment, too. So I'll hold that for a little bit. But anyway, thank you all for getting up with us. Frank is on the phone. You can always give him a call this morning. That number is 2304988. Hey, I want to thank all you folks, too, and complimented on the um, Benny Carl off-the-cuff interview. You. It's a pleasure dealing with Benny. And mo the number one question I hear, Frank, is he still alive? Yes, he is. He's 87. You'll be able to see that interview again along with Dennis Holman, which Brad just will have completed later this week. A lot of stuff going on. Sh uh, Ronnie Marks will be joining us later on this morning, too, the mayor of Athens, Alabama. We'll talk what he's got going on. And Habitat Humanities in the house. We'll check with them in just a little bit. Go back downtown to the Senior Center on Prior Street last Thursday. Got a lot of video. Senator Hostclaw talking about the referendum coming up in September. All that coming your way, plus I'm loaded with newspaper articles on a Tuesday morning. Let's get it cranking. The weather is out. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, I'm getting used to it anyway. 60 degrees out there already. Going to be an absolutely beautiful day today. Plenty of sunshine. And you know what? We don't have to worry about any rain for several days. Could say that. 86 for your high. Don't get used to these lower 80 temperatures because next week the 90s should return. But enjoy them while they last. Tomorrow, high of 87 and your low of 59. Of course, partly cloudy skies, but that won't hurt anything. Look at the rest of the forecast. Not bad at all. Look at those temperatures. We don't have to worry about any rain. Like I said, it looks like they're for four Full week. Two three zero four nine eight eight gets Frank this morning. He's already on the phone. You know what I'm hoping for next Saturday. What? It rains all day. No. Rain in 30 degrees. Well, I got an excuse to stay in all day long. I thought you were talking right. about the ball game. Yeah, I'll talk about that later on. Before we get cranking this morning, though, sad news to report today to all we folks here in Athens and Limestone County. Our longtime buddy, Sheriff Doc Oliver, passed away yesterday at 75 years old. Sheriff Blakely yeah. gave us a call yesterday afternoon, let us know about that. It's all in the papers this morning. This this morning out of the uh, Athens paper. Retired Ardmore Police Chief William Doc Oliver, known in Limestone County as a much-loved character and longtime law enforcement official, died Monday at 75 years old. Right now, there's no um, details on what the funeral arrangements are. We'll keep Aww. you posted on that. But we Doc a of photos got a him. couple of photos of Doc right here this morning. We'll share those with you. Doc, just a fantastic person. Aww. That's me on the right, Doc on the left. Uh, <laughs> one of my all-time best buddies. Wish we'd be able to do it off the cuff with him. Just a friend to everybody. Uh, there's everybody right there. The mayor, Christy, Doris, Doc. Man, if if there was a goat stew or whatever, Tom, Doc Oliver was there. Was there. Always smiling. At, at Boss Hills, you know, Doc was always there. And, you know, years ago they dedicated the bridge going over the interstate, uh, right off the interstate up there to Doc Oliver Bridge. Just a... A one-of-a-kind mm. character, Doc Oliver. He was fun he to be was. around, He'll be too. missed. A one-of-a-kind, big time. One-of-a-kind person. Hey, don't forget, and we'll talk more about that this week too, about Doc. Uh, August 28th municipal elections are a week from today. Tonight, the candidates are putting on a forum. Uh, those seeking office of the city of Athens will be forum be held at six this evening in the ballroom, the Sandridge Student Center at Athens State University. Sponsored by the News Courier, the University, and the Chamber of Commerce, and Alabama Veterans Museum. So here all the candidates tonight speak about a couple of things. Tom, what else is going on? Well, that's the reason I'm here today. To Find out what's happening? News. Yeah. A chamber coffee He's today in down here yeah, it Athens. Is. Got a lot of stuff to do there. All right, let's move on to one of my favorite subjects, Mac. Pay attention. Got to be fun. Top 25 came out a day late because of the Honey Badger's dismissal down at LSU. It's got Southern Cal 1. Y'all already know this. Alabama 2, LSU 3, Oklahoma 4, Auburn did not make it. Almost, but not close. But they got to play Clemson, who was number 14. Alabama opened 2012 as number 2 in the country. Now, 
Let's talk about that guy that didn't put the Mighty Tide number two and put us number eight and put Michigan number one. <laughs> Bob Ashmushin of the Champaign New News Gazette won't make a lot of friends in Tuscaloosa this year. He's an Associated Press football poll voter. He put defending national champion. Oh, he actually put them third, not eighth. But he put Michigan first <laughs> to upset the 12-and-a-half point favorite Crimson Tide. Here's what he's got to say. I think they had all summer to get ready for the mighty Crimson Tide, and I think there'll be a little bit of a hangover with Alabama. If you look at the history, the Crimson Tide don't win back-to-back -back titles. Who does? We did win it in 78, 79, so, yeah. something like that. He said, I just got a gut feeling. They may lose 38 to 10, and I'll get ridiculed, and that's okay. Listen, guy, you better be lucky it ain't worse than that. <laughs> yeah. You are Worser. so going to cry if you lose that first game. We ain't going to lose no ball I'll game video this to year. Share with <laughs> Alabama is too good to lose. I hope they don't. I saw the same thing last year when LSU beat us. Yeah. How'd that go, Frank? Uh, I thought I was going to cry all night. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the leaders on this year's Alabama team, he's no gentle giant. Big article on him in the paper this morning. That's right. DJ Fluker has his smile as wide as a football field. They says right here the six foot six, three thirty five pound offensive lineman wears a size twenty two shoe. <laughs> Said at the end of a recent interview with some reporters, he shook hands with everybody before leaving. It's hard to know what surprised reporters the most, the player or the size of his hands. His hand wraps around you completely. Just so happens when we <laughs> stayed at your place on the beach a year ago, oh, Mark, great. we ran in. Yeah. That's him in the middle. That's me on the left. And the obviously, that's glory on the right. This photo needs to disappear in history. He <laughs> is a nice guy. Yes, he is. And a big, big dude. one at that. <laughs> Three, what, in case y'all didn't notice the photograph, that's me on the left, that's him okay, in the middle. Okay, drop it. What a nice guy. Somebody said, Fluker's on the <laughs> beach. Well, look, you know, what a nice guy, though, Tom. His girlfriend was very nice, too. Yeah, she was. She took the photo, she, mm -hmm. she took the photo of us down there, so. When are we going back? I'm ready for a beach trip. Well, right now, it's football season, and unless they got about a 60-inch <laughs> screen down at the beach club or now, Tom, please, what y'all do have a nice TV, Tom, mm -hmm. you know? What so about the need a bigger festival? screen, though, don't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all keeping up with this guy over in the Stevenson. That's mm -hmm. over that way in DeKalb County. I've heard of Stevenson. He buried his wife in the front yard. Now the city is telling him to dig her up. <laughs> I would refer to Randy Travis digging up bones, but he's probably neck and arrested again this morning because <laughs> I ain't heard nothing else on him. James Davis is fighting to keep the remains of his late wife right where he dug her grave, in the front yard of his home just a few feet from the porch. So uh, he was only abiding by her wishes when he buried her outside their log home in 09. <laughs> Yet the city sued to move the body elsewhere. County judge ordered him to uh, move her too, but now the uh, Alabama Civil Court is considering his challenge. He's 73 and says, good Lord, they raise pigs in their yards and our horses on the road and there's a corral in the city limits. They got other grave sites all over the place, so why shouldn't I be able to bury my wife in the front yard? He said, we're not, and then they're saying, well, we're not in the 1800s anymore. So now the Supreme Court will rule, if you're allowed to bury your loved ones, or somebody else you may have a problem with and not <laughs> like, in your front yard. Wouldn't that be the same case as that man in Huntsville that's complaining about all that grass, grass around his house? He can do whatever he wants on his property? Hmm. Well, That'd that's something, yuck, something to consider. Go say hi to Grandma. She's in the backyard. <laughs> All right, I, I stole this out of Reader's Digest, large print edition. That's what I buy these days. David Letterman, pay attention. Mm -hmm. Top ten list he hopes will air on Dog TV. Is there actually a channel called Dog TV? I, I don't think there know. Is. Zorro may be getting his on channel, huh? I would imagine there is. Here's number ten. Neuter, she wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Doogie Snowser, M.D. Uh -huh. America's Got Heartworm. How I Met Your Breeder, <laughs> Bones, The King Charles Spaniel of Queens, Keeping Up with the Pomeranians. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Who's a Good Boy, starring Nathan Lane. And I like this one, True Broke Bitches. Uh, uh, 
Talk and the number now. one, Shih Tzu, my dad says. <laughs> That's cute. Is there really a channel dog TV? Huh? If there's not, there should be with as much money there as people be. spend on it. Yeah. We can start one That'll with that now. now, that that ace engineer I have working for us now, that hey, Rex, Rex Free from Rex. Moulton, Alabama. If we could just start up four or five different channels here, then people could get kind of a, you know, a Well, keep your it. fingers crossed. Those of you that have an antenna, we are hoping within two weeks you will have 24 hours cartoon on 11.2. Well, you can give me something, somebody else. Something, something to else to watch but us. <laughs> Tom, I got a question for you. I'm what scared. is the worst time for the average American to have bad breath? I bet you, dollar to a donut, you miss it. Well, say I that again. It. The worst time, worst worst time. time of day. Mac, do you know? The for the time average American breath. to have bad breath. What time of day? What time of day? I'd say early morning. What time of day? Early in the morning huh? when you first wake yeah. up. Well, that's just Wrong. you. Well, oh really? Then quit kissing me. The worst time <laughs> for bad breath is three o'clock in the afternoon. That's when factors, coffee, lunch, and stress. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, combines sense. to create a perfect storm for a stinky mouth. To freshen up, brush after lunch, and drink too. water to stay hydrated. And if you have major problems with it, go to the Coleman Dental Group or Limestone Smiles and get everything fixed up. Hear me? What? Quit kissing me in the yeah, morning okay. and at I'm 3 o'clock. I'm going to call you all about 3 every day now. <laughs> yeah, and so and check on kissing. everything. Check on everything. <laughs> There's a book out now called mm -hmm. Even Nice People Cheat Sometimes. I do say. Be honest, would you cheat if you were certain you could get away with it? We cheat up to the level that allows us to retain our self-image at a reasonable, honest individual. We want to see ourselves as honorable, but we also want to benefit from cheating. The honest truth about dishonesty, how we lie to everyone, especially ourselves. Dishonest people don't always stand out like the crew of Enron. Nice people feel, but not just about golf, fishing, and billable hours. Uh-huh. Researchers placed a six-pack of Coke and six $1 bills in dorm refrigerators. <laughs> Every Coke disappeared within 72 hours, but no one snatched the cash. they rather have soft drinks than cash. Well, they don't think if you're stealing, stealing a Coke yeah. from somebody. But you know. that's stealing? But now, I dollar. would never do anything like this, but how many oh, of y'all well, might I'm cheat on taxes? Huh? I just have a good accountant. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that's my excuse. <laughs> oh, that's my that's my excuse. All right, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hang loose on a uh, dear Jamie later, but I'm gonna do this last story before I go into the news. What is it? How's this gonna go, Frank? Not doing good. A 14-year-old South Dakota boy faces drunken driving charges along with his daddy, the father of the year, who sat drunk and intoxicated in the passenger seat. Oh, wow. The boy and his father, his father was 49, oh, wow. were arrested uh, near Mount Vernon, South Dakota. Police stopped the vehicle after she reports the boy was driving. <laughs> the boy's blood alcohol was .165, more than mm. twice the legal limit to drive. He was arrested for drunken driving. His father was arrested on charges of contributing to the delinquents of a minor and having an open container in the vehicle. Really? Both are free on bond and scheduled to be in court later this week. So they're both drunk hmm. in the car. And he had an open container. The son was a designated driver. So the kid, drunk. Mac, learn from experience. Quit drinking. <laughs> Mac's a good boy. I Leave just want to get that out there. All right, I will do a Dear Jamie this Don't morning. I, just Sorry. because I feel like it. All right, <laughs> you didn't go to your high school reunion. No. Tom, have you ever been to one? I have. Dang it, I want to go to one, but they won't invite me to one. <laughs> <laughs> they did. I but I am invited go. to, uh, thank you, Brad, for bringing that up. I am invited <laughs> to a Channel 31 reunion coming up this weekend. How's that going to go, Frank? Yay. Really? Yeah, because I ain't going. <laughs> My wife's 35th thank Annual High School reunion is coming up. I'm trying to think of a reason to get out of attending, but before I could come up with this, she told me I shouldn't even bother to go because she's going to meet two out-of-state girlfriends there that went to school together. I just happened to know that one of those girlfriends' uh, brother, she had the hots for. Would you study this story? You don't have to read it. I live it. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is gaga over this guy. She doesn't know, but I've seen how excited she is to open his Facebook message on the reunion site. That's why we go to that Channel 31 reunion site. I'm going, oh, boy. I can't wait to hang out with people I used to work with. You didn't like know. them when you worked with them. Why do yes. you want to hang out with them now? Well, it was 19 Sunday. Y'all know Sunday was 20 years ago that I left Channel 31. Mm. I ain't never been the same since. <laughs> True. Do you want to go? 
I don't want to go. I don't You'll see to. all the greats. <laughs> First of all, they, they see all the, the same stories every day. Hey, Rex, you want to go with me? <laughs> <laughs> me, and Rex, me and Rex should get a date. Sorry, it's Tom, don't mandate. be standing up. Huh? It's a mandate. <laughs> Reunions of work classmates get together without spouses. Without spouses have been known to trigger affairs that otherwise would never have happened. Uh huh. Where will I go that night? It's during mm. the day. Oh, shucks. <laughs> you think that's purged for night? <laughs> you got to go to this reunion. You got to pay when you get in, like a cover charge. $12. You'd think people that owned a station worth millions would pay for everything after all the money we made them. But no. <laughs> so I'm thinking we'll come up with a reunion here. All the people who used to work at ZTV. No. Huh? I don't want to see them. <laughs> what? Well, we still have Brad. We got him from day one. He's dedicated. Temporarily. <laughs> All right, Rex, we're going. Pick me up. Because I'm Pick sure up, I'll Rex. be a drinking if up. I have to go to that. <laughs> <laughs> I will take a break. I got a free afternoon. On a Tuesday morning edition of Cooper Company Live, we'll come back with ZNN. Y'all, hang on. <laughs>